Okay. Oops. Oh. One second. So now we're going to start. Oh, one second. I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Yes. The, uh, one second. Let me let me adjust this so the could be a better way. I, I hear you fine. Uh, is that even better? Do you, no. do you hear me better or worse? I hear you better, but it, it distorts your voice slightly, but it's fine. It's fine. Okay. <clears throat> Should I take it out and just use the regular uh, thing? Whichever is easiest for you. Okay. I don't like gadgets. Okay. Back to regular, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's start from <clears throat> for up Yehuda. We're starting on um, that's four eight lines from the top. The last word on the line is Verebi. Verebi Yehuda. Verebi Yehuda Mekami Delisi Argus Sefer Yosef. Okay, let me just go back. We learned that the Aaron was two and a half Amas. By one and a half Amas at the height of one and a half. The Homachlekes was between Rebbe and Rebbe Yehuda is how big is an Amma. So either an Amma is six Tvachim or five Tvachim. If it's six Tvachim, then two and a half Amas is going to be 15 Tvachim. 12, 6 plus 6 plus a half, which is 3. And the other way is going to be 9. 1 and a half. 6 plus a half, which was 3, which would be 9. And then, according to that, there would be a Sefer Torah that was inside because the Luchas themselves took up 12 Tvachim. And then there would be a Sefer Torah that took up 2 Tvachim that would be in there as well. According to, that was Reb Meir's opinion. According to Reb Yehuda, he said, that the that it was five tvachim was each uh, was each ama, which means that it was a total of twelve and a half. <clears throat> it was two five plus five plus plus two and a half, right? It could be a half. So that would take and the, the luchas took up all twelve uh, tvachim, and there was one extra half uh, that was for the thickness of the walls. So basically, we don't have a safer third in there, so we we had a um, uh, we said that there was the safer third was outside. <laughs> so the Can safer I, there was outside of the urn. Can I ask a question? For we a had a uh, a pasuk that the uh, what was the pasuk that we said? The samtam is mitzad the urn. You put it on the side of the urn. Wasn't there Putting another alternative? The we, I'm sorry. Wasn't there another alternative? Yeah, that it was in it was in the urn. But it, it was, was separated uh, into two pieces, and that way it would fit in the urn. Yeah, but that was only according to Rabbi Meir. That they had two tvachim extra, so it's you, you can even though you can you can roll it like this, so you can roll it all together. Uh, you roll it all over one, but still, if you would spread out a little bit over the top, you'd be able to fit it in. There. But I, I yes. understood it. I guess I understood it wrong. I understood the alternative to be that you could separate it. You could have you know, safer devarim in a separate scroll. Yeah, you, you don't have then any. You have, extra, then you have room at the top. You don't have any extra space in the Aaron, according to Rabbi Yehuda. Only according to Rabbi Meir. According to Rabbi Meir, you didn't need to separate it. Well, you would separate, you could, you could make one scroll, according to Rabbi Meir. According to Rabbi Yehuda, you used up the whole, uh, the whole Aaron. Yeah. I'm throwing in the left hook, so it's either totally irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Sustained. <laughs> but when it... When we talked about the Kodesh Kodeshim and how it, it, the Oren didn't fit in the Kodesh Kodeshim, we attributed it to the existential uh, supernatural right. sizes or whatever it is that existed within the Kodesh Kodeshim. Why did we not ever attribute any of that 
to the, the object of the Oran, as opposed to the Kurdish Kurdish. Why are we saying the Kurdish Kurdish fit in? Why are we saying the Oran fit in? In which case, if you attribute it some certain natural ability, then his whole Gemari could throw out. Let me repeat to Dr. Stein's question, according to my understanding of it. Yeah, it's hard. Is, uh, is, um, if you say, if you say that the uh, RN doesn't take up any space in the Kedusha Kedusha, so why do we have this? Let's just say the military fits in, everything fits in, nothing takes up the whole thing. Okay. I don't know. It's <laughs> really no, stupid. No, no, it's not. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good question. I just, I just, I don't have. <laughs> I don't have the um, the details of how exactly that were. I don't know the mechanism. You, unless you claim it all on the encasement, it was it was the Kurdish Kavachi that provided the holy space and not the owner itself. That was my question, boss. Maybe. Okay, so now the Gemara says that so according to Rabbi Huda with the, with the Sefer Torah, it doesn't fit into the Aaron. So where was the Sefer Torah? So we say, no, it's not on the floor, right? So it says it's um, it was put on the box that was gotten back that we got from the the gift from the Palestinian. That box was that they put on top. Well, uh, the Gemara says Rabbi Yudah Makami Belasi argues before that box came. Sefer Torah, hey where was the Sefer Torah position? So the Gemara answers, Dapa have enough of me, Yosef, Iluya, Ilu, Ilave, probably, Ilave Sefer Torah. There was a, um, a ledge that came off the Aran, and the Sefer Torah was put on that ledge. So it wasn't on the floor, it wasn't on the box, because the box didn't arrive yet. It was talking about in the Mishkan before. Um, before the Plishtim returned it. So then uh, we turned the RN so we didn't have that back. So there was a list. Okay. What were they doing in travel? Yeah. How did it hold on? That's what you're asking. It's just asking how it held on when they traveled. Well, I, I, if it carried the Kayan in, I'm sure it could carry the Sefer Okay, I don't know. Had a chain, had a guy felt. <laughs> Held, held it on. Okay. Um, according to Rav Meir, it says that the Aaron is in, that the, I'm sorry, the Sefer is inside the Aaron. I'm inside the Aaron, my Yavid. Like, what does he do with the verse that says that the Sefer Torah is on the side of the Aaron? It says, only by the mitzvah, the mitzvah, the mitzvah, the mitzvah, the mitzvah, the mitzvah, the mitzvah. He says, it's not that it's outside the Aaron. It's inside the Aaron. It's just not dividing between the Luchas. It's not that I have the Luchas, six Trachim used up here, six Trachim here, and then the center, the two empty Trachim would be David there. No. The Luchas and were all pushed to one side. It was not centered. And then the, Ar the Sefer Torah was on the side. Do we know in the in the Humash that a Sefer Torah was actually in the Aaron? I don't remember. Yeah, that's what we're, it, does, it doesn't say it. In the Chumash itself, but it does say uh, that is in the Chumash that's put on the side. Where does it say it's in the actual Aran? Um, that's a, a way we got that from Ein Ba'arain Rach, the double negative. Uh, that, and so only Reb Meir would have that, Reb Yehuda doesn't have that. Isn't there one opinion that actually was on the ledge? That's what we just said, according to Reb Yehuda, it's on the ledge. That ledge there, before we got the uh, box on the ballistic, once we got the box on the ballistic, they didn't need that ledge. I guess they removed it. So how do you hear over the shell? The shell. And it says that it wasn't the center part of the ledge. Right. And it was added with the shell and the property. Oh, the the uh, safe to tell They removed them. Right. Okay. Now the Gemara says, Rab Meir Amudim Hecha Abitaimun. According to Rab Meir, where were these two pillars? You see, Rab Meir is using area that's remaining for the safe to What about that's the length? What about the width? He said, well, we needed the width um, to be able to get to, to get the safer out. There was a little bit extra there. 
Um, how much extra was there? Uh, one one tefach, I think, extra. What did we say? <clears throat> no, yes. we, we had two tefachim left on the side. And that was the problem. We yeah, did have one on each side. One, uh, one on the top and one on the bottom. Yeah, one on the top and one on the bottom. But that would be able to reach it. So uh, according to... Um, According to Rabbi Yehuda, what did he do with the extra tefach on the top? He put in these posts. I, I added extra tefach on the uh, on the on the top and bottom of the of the width of the iron because the luchas themselves took up six, and the iron itself was seven and a half. Half of it was used for the width, so we have an extra tefach. So what do we do with that extra tefach? We put these um, posts that Shleim Melech made. Oh, well, I guess the posts were only over the lupus, not over the side of the... Uh... <clears throat> well, what about Rameir? Where was the post? It says, Mibroi, they were outside. Okay, that's a simple answer. They didn't need to be in the Rameir, Shivri, Luchas, Menachem, Minale. How does Rameir know that the broken tablets were in Arun? You see... When also, when uh, um, we said ain ba'arin ra, the double negative, according to Rabbi Huda, that's coming to teach me that the broken tablets, which we said the tablets weren't broken, that was in the Aaron as well. According to Mayor, in ba'arin ra, only the Sefer Torah was in the According to Rabbi Huda, it says that the broken tablets. According to Rabbi Mayor, how do you know the broken tablets were in the If you use that passage to tell me the Sefer Torah is there, so he says. We know it from another source, from Ravuna. Ravuna, meaning of this pasuk, <coughs> that the name, the name of Hashem, uh, it says twice the name, name, name of Hashem, uh, of hosts, uh, who sits on the Kruvim, is on it. Because it says the name twice, that, that means one is the Luchas and one is the broken tablet. Remember the Gemara Brachas? Gemara Bracha said, how do you know that you have to give um, respect to a Torah sage that forgot his Torah learnings? And the broken tablets, they're in the they're in the ark together with the whole tablets. That was that was corresponding to the one that forgot his learning. Anyway, the Ida, what does Rabbi Yehuda do with this shame shame? It says twice the name. He already knows that the tablets and the broken tablets are in the ark. He says, "Only by the Rabbi Yechonan, he uses that for Rabbi Yechonan." Then Rabbi Yechonan, Rabbi Shimon Yechai, Rabbi Yechonan says, "In the name of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai, usually it doesn't say Amar Rabbi Shimon. Usually it says Mishum Rabbi Shimon Yechai." And we say that if he says it Mishum in the name of, that means he didn't hear it directly. But over here it says Amar Rabbi Shimon Yechai. He says like the Rabbi Yechonan heard it from Rabbi Shimon Yechai, which is a little surprising because Rabbi Yechonan wouldn't have seen Rabbi Shimon Yechai. Whatever the case is, Malame, this teaches us. I'm sorry? Close to each Oh, yeah? In the name of, yeah, but it would say in the name of either way. Just in the Hebrew, you would see it different. If it's Mishum, Mishum means, or Mishmei means in the name of, and Amar means he said in the name of. He said that he said, which means he said in the name of. Malame, this teaches us, Shashem, Bechal, Kinui, Menachem, Baran. So, what does Rabbi Yehuda do with that shame, shame? It's coming to teach me. That the name of God, with all its um, nicknames, all its possibilities, maybe the 72 letter name of Hashem and the 42 and the, the, all the names of Hashem, all the possibilities are all written <laughs> on a parchment and they're placed in Aaron. The Ida, so what, how does your mayor know that it's all the names of God are in the Aaron? Nami mi bayale he also needs that it needs that. So how does he know um, that, uh, that, uh, that the tablets are in the Aaron? So Zana Khanami, you're right. How do we know the tablets are in there? According to Reb Meir. He doesn't learn it from Ein Ba'ar and Rak. He uses that to tell me the Torah is in there. It's a nafkling. It's a Reb Yosef. He uses it for what Reb Yosef taught. <clears throat> he learns it from Reb Yosef taught. And Reb Yosef asher shi barta v'samper. In the Torah it says, you should make a new set of lupes in the place of the ones that you broke and place the new ones in the ark. So it says, the ones that you broke, and place. Oh, Malami, this comes to teach us. The fact that it says in place them, referring to the new tablet, but it says the word in place them, 
right next to the word that says the broken ones, right? You should make new ones in place of the broken ones, the ones that you broke and place them. It says, oh, the broken ones need to be placed in the ark as well. So that's another side. What does Rabbi Huda do? He used Ein Bar and Rock to tell me that, right? The double negatives to tell me that look at it in the ark. He says, so what does he do with this? When we buy lay like the he needs this for Rishlakis says, and Rishlakis are sure Shibarta that he broke. I'm like, because the Baruch called the Maisha, Shem started to Maisha, Yashik Kayach Shibarta should uh, have strength. Shikayach <coughs> is like, thank you. But it literally means. He's saying it's Yashir. Asher. From the word from Asher, that which uh, is Yashir, which means um, strength, strong. Yashir. Yashir. Sharer uh, means hard, I think, in Aramaic. So, Yashar in, in Hebrew means straight, right? But um, it probably comes from the Aramaic. Sharer. Okay. In uh, Israel, when they ask you, you get directions, and you say, go, uh, you know, Yashar, Yashar, you mean a smaller. Than, there's over there, there's a gas station, and they'll tell you wherever you want to be. <laughs> okay. So, Tanar Abanan, start on a brisa. Sijin Shel Nevi'im, what's the order of the prophets? You know, we, when you have a Tanakh, uh, so it's already in there. What is the actual order of the prophets? Well, how we learned in the Gemara before that there's eight of eight of them, right? It says, Yeshua V'Shayftim, and so far that's the way we have it as well. Shmuel and Malachim. We have Shmuel Al, Shmuel Beis, Malachim Al, Malachim Beis, but whatever. Yirmiya, Yecheskel, and Yeshaya, that's out of order. We have Yeshaya, Yirmiya, Yecheskel. According to the Gemara, it's Yirmiya, Yecheskel, Yeshaya. Why do we have a different in our Because ours are published by the guy, by the, uh, based on the, the Gaiyish order. Vishnei Maser. Then you have the minor prophets. I think the judges was actually the first. Oh, that could be. Or that could be out of order. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, uh, I'm not sure who the last one was. Um, uh, Neil Ben Kanaz, I think, was the first one. Oh, that could have been earlier. Okay. Well, uh, the Gemara has a question now. When we speak about the 12 minor prophets, the first one is Heshea. Heshea Kadim. Heshea really becomes, comes before everyone. Because if he left the bar Hashem by Heshea, Hashem first spoke to Heshea. Heshea is not Yeshua. Heshea is. So, how do you say Hashem in English? Jose. Was that it? Jose. 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 Yeah. No, not Jose. Jose. <laughs> no way, Jose. Jose. No way, Jose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. I'll check that, Jay. <laughs> so I can't yeah, joke in the night. Look there, uh, the Gemara asked, really? Hashem spoke first to Hashem. It's what he means. There were many prophets in between Moshe and Hashem. Hashem wasn't the first. Well, Rabbi Rabbi Yechon explained, He was the, the first of the four of that group. There was a, uh, a group of four. He was the first of those four. Who were those? Be'elohein, Hashem, Yeshaya, Amasamicha. Well, now, according to this, why do you have Yeshaya at the end and Heshaya after Heshaya, right? You should have Heshaya before because Hashem spoke to Heshaya even before. <clears throat> uh, the Gemara says, because we're putting it together in Treyasa, so with the, uh, in the, with the minor prophets, those minor prophets, they were at the end. So Heshea goes together with the minor prophets because it was put together and the minor prophets are at the end. Why don't you just write it independently and, and uh, put it beforehand? Right? Publisher can make more money, separate book. So it says, I did the Zutter, Mirkas, and we're afraid it may be too small. It's going to be a small pamphlet, and it could get it could get lost. Well, so um, that's where we put it into the uh, Treyasar. Yeah, and that's why it's in Treyasar. It's in this book oh. where it has all twelve. So that's why it doesn't get lost. So if someone instead of uh, I guess someone can make a C instead of casting or a Pesach before, so you can 
Read, read a, a uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh huh. You can make a Sounds good. On the speaker. Uh, on, the, on the one in the Nevi'im. I guess if it's a whole safer. I would assume, though, that you would have to do a, an entire safer, like the whole tray also. I don't think you just do a body and you make a seam. Yeah. Or do a chapter of the Hillen. Flackers. I'm not saying, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, which one, which is to show this one? I forget. This one 117. And when we learned Pesach, though, we learned that maybe that was originally attached to the one before it. Now the Gemara says, Mechdi, let's see. Yeshaya, Kadim, Yermi, of Yecheskel. Yeshaya came before Yermi, Yecheskel. Kadmi, Yeshaya, Bresha. Why isn't Yeshaya first? It says, Kibin, the Malachim, Seife, Chorbana. Since the Book of Kings, the end describes the, the, describes the destruction. The Yermia Kula Chorbana. And Yermia is entirely about the destruction. So, the Yecheskel, Reisha Chorbana, the Seife, Nechmasa, Nechamta. Uh, and Yeheskel starts off with destruction, finishes off with consolation. Yeshaya kula nechamta. And Yeshaya is entirely consolation. So some chinan chorbana lechorbana, which means we put destruction next to destruction, which means we put uh, Yermia next to the kings. Because that ends with destruction. Sort of like dominoes. Where you have to match the one, you know, you know, you, play, you, you have to put one that's a... Uh, yeah, misery misery loves company. Yeah, misery loves company. Okay. <laughs> So you put uh, Malachim together with Yermia, and then the Yecheskel has some uh, misery as well. So you put that over there. But then Yecheskel ends with consolation. So you put Yeshaya next to Yecheskel, which comes after. Okay. Sidron Shel Ksuvim, what's the order of the writings? It says Rus is first, Sefer Tilim, the book of Psalms. We have we have actually in our we have Psalms is first. We have Rus is first, and uh, according to this, uh, <clears throat> Rus Tehillim, uh, Sefer Tehillim, Eiv, Job, Mishlei, and Kehelas, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, Sher Shirim, Song of Songs, Kinnas, which means Echa, Lamentations, Daniel, and Megillus Esther, Ezra, the Divrei Yamin, Esther and Ezra. Book of Ezra, it's interesting. Ezra is divided into two. The it comes out according to this that there's really 25 books. Five of the Torah, right? It's five. Then you have eight of the prophets, and you have 12 of the writings, which comes out to 25. Am I correct? Eight plus 12 plus five plus 25. Truth. So it must be that Ezra, that Neil, and that I'm sorry, not the Neil. That uh, Ezra and no, Ezra is Ezra and Nehemiah. I thought we were only supposed to have 24 books. Yeah, I thought so too. Back checking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but here it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ezra and Nehemiah is one book. Oh, okay. Ezra Nehemiah comes out as one book, oh, okay. but it's still I still have twelve. No, no, no. Right. no. Probably with the answer. Let's go through them. Tell them Mashli Jo. That's three. Shira Shira Eka. Start from Rus. Start from Rus. What's that? No, no, start from Rus. No, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm... Two. It's, it's eleven. It's 11, which is what it should be. No, I, I, are you counting Rus? Yes, I'm counting Rus. I don't are see you counting you... Dibri Ayaman? Yes. But Ezra is Nechemia, all, uh, I'm counting uh, Ezra Nehemiah as one. It's responsive reading together. Okay, no problem. But here you have Rus, Tehillim, Eiv, Mishlei, Kehelis is five. Shirashirim, Kinnis, Daniel, Megillus Esther, Ezra, Dibriyama, you're right. Megillus Esther, okay, it's 11. It's 11, very good. Good job, Naftali. Good. Yeah. Put that in. Thank you. Take the rest of the night off, Naftali. I have nowhere so, to go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay.
Go to the clubhouse. <laughs> that's funny. Um, okay, good. That's important. So there's 24 books. Um, According to the opinion that says it was in the days of Maisha, the Kabmi of Beresha, how come Yiv isn't first? Why do we put Rus first? It says, well, we would never want to start with uh, misery again, right? Punishment. What about Rus? That's not a, a happy story. The Gemara says, well, that has a nice ending. Why is the book of Rus? Why? Or why was her? Why was she called Rus? She got some men of David because David came out. That he satiated Hashem with songs and praise. Who wrote each of these books? Well, Maisha Kasev Sifrei. Maisha wrote his book. Which book is that? The Torah. Who partially Bilam? He also wrote the book of Bilam, or the portion of Bilam. Which is funny that that's not included in the Torah. Right? I, I'm always surprised about this. Why, what, is, what is it that he wrote separately about Bilam? So I, I I would have thought that it meant the Parsha of Bilam. Yeah. What else does it mean? Well, um, Rashi book? says oh. maybe in, in Parsha Falak, right? Rashi, from Rashi, it looks Nivuasa Mashalov, Afal Pishenim Tzorche Maisha Vitirasa Vesayda Maisha. No, it looks like there, there is nothing else. It's just Parsha Falak. That Moshe's writing, <clears throat> even though it's not necessary for the rest of the Torah, it's not like part of the prophecy of the Torah. It says the Rifta writes that Moshe wrote an entire book about um, Bilam, but it was lost. Oh. And the Maharal suggests that this statement is necessary because otherwise one might have thought that Bilam's words are his own prophecy and lack the sanctity of Torah. Uh -huh. Therefore, Baresa teaches that Moshe wrote these words. Okay, so we got two interpretations here from Yonatan. One interpretation is from the Ritva. The Ritva says that there was another book that Moshe wrote. It was the Prophecies of Bilam, and uh, it got lost. Okay, there's another interpretation that Yonatan said from the Maral, and that is that I could have thought that maybe since those words of Bilam in the Torah are from are not really Torah words. Could have thought that they don't contain the sanctity. It comes to this Gemara comes to tell me that Moshe wrote this as well. No, no, no other book. Just could have thought maybe it doesn't contain that. It doesn't have the sanctity of the rest of the Torah. Um, then we say in Eir, Moshe also wrote the book of Eir. How did they lose the book? How did they lose the book? <laughs> Yeshua Kasev Sifra Yishmenim Sukkim Sukkim Yeshua wrote his own book, which is the book of Yeshua. And he also wrote um, the last eight verses of the Torah, as we'll see in a moment. We'll see soon. Shmuel Kasev Sifra Shmuel wrote his book, the Shaiftim. He also wrote the book of Shaiftim in Rus. He also wrote the, wrote the, Shmuel wrote the book of Rus. David Kasev Sifra Tilma, the Atzars of Kainim. David wrote the book of Tilim through or with. The help of ten elders, which means that he collected from them and also compiled his own. Aidea the Marisha in that's number one. Aidea Malki Tzedek, that's number two. Malki Tzedek, I think is shame, right? Aidea Avram, it's three. Aidea Moshe, it's four. Aidea Haman, right? Maskil Lehaman, was five. Aidea Yedusan, six. Aidea Yosef, you say Mizmal Yosef, right? That's uh, where are we holding seven. And the three sons of Kairach, that makes a total of 10. But there were 10 people that assisted David in writing the Tilim. Yermia wrote the book of Yermia. And he also wrote the book of Kings. And he also wrote Echa. Chizkiah Vesiatai, King Chizkiah, and his um, assistants. Kasvu Yeshaya, Mishle, Shir, Shirim, Vekehelis. I, I always was told that Mishleh was written by Shleim Amela. Um, and Kehelis. Here it says, no, it says Chizkiah. You know, yeah, I don't hold by this. I never heard this before. <laughs> Lots of stuff like this. Okay. 
Um, Daniel and Miguel Zester. They wrote Yecheskel, the twelve prophets. Daniel and Miguel Zester was all written by Anchek Nesek Daila. Ezra, because of Sefer, Ezra wrote the book of Ezra. The Yichas shall divra yam ad loy. And he wrote, you see, divra yam in the book of Chronicles, as everyone's lineage up until. Up until Ezra. That's as far as he goes. Oh, the Gemara is going to say, uh, no, the Gemara doesn't say this. Uh, Rashi, Rashi says that why did Yermia write to Cheskel? Hillel is telling us because he didn't live in Israel. What was the. Um, and what about Daniel? <clears throat> also Daniel and, and also Esther, and also the 12 prophets. Um, and Chag, Zechariah, and Malach, they wrote it all down. Okay, that's, that's Rashi. Messiah, Leila, what time is it now? Let's leave it over here. We can start. Um, I, let me just finish this one thing. Messiah Leila Rav, the Maragi, the Marav, Leol Ezra, the Babel, the Chief Zasme Bala. Ezra didn't come up from Babel until he put in his own Yichas into the book of the Reyamim, and then he came up. Okay. Leave it over there. What was the catalyst that made it so that no more books were added to Tanakh? That was the Anche Kasek Daila, the canonized.